All righty. I'm pretty sure we have everybody here now. So, well, a couple more are still joining, but um, I just wanted to uh, really quickly, uh, as, as we're going, uh, going ahead and getting started here, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is uh, Dr. Joshua Beal. I'm the Director of Criminology here at uh, Flagler College. And um, today we're uh, going to uh, take some time and kind of talk uh, in this master class a little bit about what the difference is between criminology and criminal justice. We, um, especially for those of you who are um, incoming students that are going to be trying to decide where you want to go to college, uh, you're, you're rising seniors or you're getting ready to make a decision, um, you're going to see that there's a lot of um, opportunities for and, and um, differences in different majors and where you want to go to school and what you want to study. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about what that difference is and, and why that difference is um, actually present. And so um, without further ado, um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. If, if you guys have questions throughout this process at all, or if you guys um, need me to slow down or want me to elaborate on anything, there is a question and answer box. Um, I've got the question and answer box pulled up here, so feel free to uh, leave any questions um, along the way as we're, we're going through this as well, and I'll try and answer them as best as possible. So the uh, very first thing, right, when we uh, talk about uh, criminology or criminal justice is we, we have the, to kind of battle with the TV's ideas of criminology and criminal justice. We've all probably seen TV shows like NCIS or Criminal Minds or CSI, and we, we think of uh, criminology and criminal justice as perfectly kind of portrayed in these um, TV shows. And unfortunately, as um, with all TV shows, these are actually, you know, made for entertainment. They're not really um, made for us to be uh, viewed as documentaries in any capacity as to the life of anyone who's thinking about majoring in criminology or criminal justice. And so keep that in mind as we're going through this whole process. Now, a lot of people, you know, will ask what you want to major in and, and why, why is it that we're interested in studying crime or criminology, right? And there's a lot of different reasons for why we would do this, right? It, it's fascinating to a lot of people to figure out why people follow the rules or don't follow the rules. We all have different opinions about uh, what the rules are or what the rules should be, and we think of certain crimes like murder or, or sexual assault in some capacity as clearly bad acts, but then other crimes like maybe drinking alcohol in rage or, or smoking weed that we don't view as necessarily all that criminal. So why do some people follow these rules and why do some people follow more rules than other people? We know people that would say, I would never, ever, ever commit a crime. However, if I get a water cup at McDonald's and fill it up with Coke, that's not really stealing because one well, McDonald's can afford the loss, right? We also kind of look at these questions of how do we get people to follow the rules? How do we get people to conform? And that's a very interesting kind of topic uh, to, to think about or talk about now. Even right now, in, in a very kind of salient time in U.S. history, we're seeing mass protests across the country, and what law enforcement is trying to figure out is how do we get people to follow the rules, and what the protesters are trying to figure out is how do we get law enforcement to stop killing us, right? And so there's these really interesting kind of debates about how do we get people to follow the rules, or how do we get people to conform, that also is somewhat interesting when we think about studying crime. Also, though, Let's be honest, studying crime is pretty cool, right? We've got good guys, we've got bad guys, we've got fast cars, there's guns, there's lights. Um, and the uh, entertainment industry has done a really good job of kind of showing us or, or uh, portraying these careers as kind of, you know, um, exciting high energy careers. And so that might be another motivation or reason to why we're interested in this study of crime, why all of you are thinking about majoring in either criminology or criminal justice. So when we start talking about the differences between the two, it's helpful to really begin by talking about how they're similar. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So what is the same between criminology and criminal justice? Both are interested in some capacity in crime, criminals, and law enforcement. So if you are thinking about a, a, a career in law enforcement in some capacity, either criminology or criminal justice is a good major for you to, to select. Both are interested in how crime affects society. Both use and examine the law in some capacity, which kind of makes sense, right? We're studying law 
violation um, or law enforcement in some capacity. They provide broad overviews of theories. They use crime statistics, although one um, degree uses them more than others. And um, as previously mentioned, both are really, really good law enforcement majors. So if you know that you want to go into law enforcement, there's nothing in life that's going to change your mind, then really majoring in criminology or criminal justice would be an, a means to that end. However, if you are a little hesitant, you're not really 100% sure what you want to do, there are advantages in majoring in one over the other. So, so this is really how criminology and criminal justice are the same. And um, moving forward, we're going to talk specifically about how they're different and why these differences are important. So what is different between the two? Well, first of all, criminology does the science, right? This has the kind of ology, right? The study of crime, whereas criminal justice applies the science. And the way that you can kind of think about this, if it's, if it's helpful, is kind of like uh, in building a house. You have the architect that kind of designs the house and, and um, will tell you what walls are load bearing, why they need to be load bearing, what kind of wind strength the house can stand up to. Then you have the actual builder building the house. They are the ones like, I would not want an architect to come be the one to actually physically put the roof on my house. I want a experienced roofer to do that because they're the ones who do the actual work. They need help from the architect or from the, the contractor designer, but they still are the ones actually doing the work. The same thing is basically true between criminology and criminal justice. Criminology is kind of like the architect. Criminal justice is kind of like the, the roofer in this analogy. One's not better than the other. I'm not, please don't um, misinterpret it as that. But one is looking at the larger uh, scheme and the larger plan, whereas one is actually, you know, kind of rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty and doing the work. And those differences are, um, pretty clear in the coursework that's given also. So in criminology, we utilize theory and research methodologies in virtually every single course that's taught. We have entire courses even dedicated just to theory and research methodology. Um, we also, uh, you know, use these statistics to look for patterns in deviant behavior on a kind of a macro scale and try and explain why certain neighborhoods or cities are more criminogenic than others. Criminal justice, on the other hand, has a diversity of courses that really only kind of graze the surface or touch on theories and research methodology. And what they use the theories and research methodology for is different. So whereas criminologists try and find a theory to help explain crime and as much crime as possible within a single theoretical kind of orientation, criminal justice is much more interested in the policies or the so what of the theory. So they might a look at a theory that says the reason people uh, commit crime, and this is a very basic, this is not a fully in-depth theory, but um, the, a basic idea of maybe why people commit crime is because they make the choice that committing crime is better than not committing the crime. Okay, great, so what do we have to do then? Maybe if we make more strict punishments and have more law enforcement on the streets, they'll think committing the crime is not better, right? And they'll actually stop committing crime because they're scared of getting caught in some capacity. They also, whereas criminologists like to study and use statistics to look to see what is happening with crime rates in society and if policies are effective or ineffective at working, uh, criminal justice uh, professionals typically use crime mapping more to say, well, let's look where crime is in society and just patrol those areas more heavily, ignoring that maybe there's something causing those areas to be more criminogenic, right? And so the, the way that we uh, utilize courses between the criminology major and criminal justice major is um, different. Now these differences are nuanced because if you look at a lot of the criminology and criminal justice curriculums, there is a lot of overlap between the two, but the content and how we talk about uh, the material in these courses is different between the two programs. Uh, criminology has a focus on societal responses to crime. And so in criminology, we're very interested in things like fear of crime or perceptions of different types of crime. We also focus on how law interacts with society. So for example, why have we decided that certain acts are illegal when other acts aren't? Uh, a beautiful example of that is if I told you there was two different um, things you could smoke. One is going to probably give you cancer and um, hurt you and maybe those around you. One has some medicinal uses which one, just based on that description, would you think is legal? 
probably the one that has medicinal uses, right? But in fact, we know, right, that cigarettes are legal in society today and, and marijuana is not. So why is it that we've decided that marijuana is a, a bad thing to smoke, but for some reason we've been okay with um, cigarette smoking and tobacco smoke for hundreds of years? And so criminology will kind of focus on those intricacies and those subtleties within um, our law creation, as well as how people respond to crime. Criminal justice more has a focus on police investigations. So this is going to teach you how to investigate a crime scene. We're not really as interested in, in criminal justice at least, as to um, why the criminal is committing the crime as much. We're more interested in how do we catch the bad guy in that specific instance. So criminology has a zoomed out kind of societal focus. Criminal justice has a focus on the specific crime that takes place. Also, as opposed to why certain acts are legal or illegal, criminal justice accepts that certain acts are legal and illegal, and then focuses on the subtleties between those legal and illegal acts, such as what's the difference between a felony versus a misdemeanor, or what is an adult versus a juvenile offense, and how should we classify those differently based on this certain case? If someone is 17 years old and commits a bad crime, do we choose to try them as an adult or not? And so um, those are, uh, again, in the kind of, uh, context of um, courses also where some of those differences are. Also, criminology focuses on ethics and crime prevention from a kind of macro scale, right? Are there certain kind of ethical considerations to some of the, the policies that are being uh, put in place right now? Um, one of the things right now, again, in, in these examples that uh, I'm sure we've all seen on social media is there's been this very interesting difference in the uh, COVID-19 kind of stay at home um, riots and protests and the Black Lives Matter protests that are currently going on. Why do we have those differences and why do we have different police responses to those? A criminologist would be um, interested in that. Criminology is also a subfield of sociology, making it, again, a, a much more academic discipline in terms of uh, the readings that we do and the and the class assignments and projects and and really at the end of the day focuses on the why of crime happening right and that's why uh, the name of this lecture is criminology versus criminal justice why the difference because criminology really focuses on that why um, criminal justice on the other hand focuses more on police procedures so instead of saying why was there a difference between the uh, COVID-19 protests and the Black Lives Matter protests it focuses more on how do you best respond if there is a protest, not really looking too in depth at those um, potential differences and sociological factors that are affecting those differences. It's also a more applied degree, making it much more kind of job training for those of you who know that you're going to go into criminal justice. And this, um, you know, criminal justice degrees are, are focused much more on the how of crime prevention. And so how can we best utilize the limited um, resources of law enforcement, how can we best uh, utilize the, the, um, the community integrating with law enforcement in order to, um, to better understand uh, crime happening, right? And so um, we just, uh, I just got a question in right now. Um, thank you, Kevin, for the question. Can criminology dictate police procedure? It certainly can, right? And so there's, and there's plenty of examples of that happening. So um, for example, uh, a year or two ago, the most common uh, police um, interrogation practice, practice was a practice known as the Reed Technique. And it was um, an interrogation practice that was viewed somewhat critically by criminologists and legal psychologists as somewhat coercive. And so after a tremendous amount of research done particularly by criminologists and, and legal psychologists, it was determined that the read technique was maybe a little too coercive and not as diagnostic as people hoped it would be in um, order to get people to confess or not. So we were ha seeing a lot of false confessions happening um, in American society in general, where people were quite literally confessing to crimes they didn't commit. And that's obviously a problem because you only want interrogations to work if people are we, will, we want people to confess to crimes if they're guilty. We don't want innocent people confessing to a crime because that's two issues. Number one, an innocent person's potentially going to prison. And number two, um, you also left the bad guy out there in the streets, right? And so um, the same thing was true with eyewitness reform in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. Criminologists and legal psychologists did quite a bit of research to help um, uh, bring about eyewitness identification reform because of some issues. So the short answer is yes, absolutely. Criminology very much does influence uh, police practice as well as, um, as well as all sorts of other areas in the system. 
I just got another question that said, which would you advise to major in if someone is planning to go to law school right after? We're actually going to answer that in a slide or two. Um, and so I don't want to give you any spoilers, right? I want to, I want to keep, uh, keep you interested. So I, I will answer that in a slide or two, and I'll explain that more here in a second. So keep the questions coming, by the way, as you guys um, have them. So specifically, why does Flagler College only offer criminology? Well, Flagler made the strategic um, choice uh, to offer this, number one in large part, because it is the more academic program. We are um, a, a college that has been established in this liberal arts um, kind of uh, tradition. And so we want individuals here to learn not only the like have job training in some capacity, but we also want to teach you how to think. We want to teach you how uh, to critically examine information that's given to you. And so um, because of that, we chose this more kind of academic uh, route. Criminal justice degrees focus exclusively on crime, whereas criminology kind of zooms out and looks at the causes of crime and consequences of crime as well. So it's a little bit more of a holistic view. Um, for example, we, we could look at um, a crime in a vacuum and just say, well, why is, um, a, a perfect example of this actually is what's, what's going on right now with these riots. A lot of people in America right now can't understand why are you breaking into a target or why are you smashing a, a window because um, of some uh, police misconduct? This doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, right? And, and in a, a kind of, in a vacuum of just, you're upset about one thing so this other behavior happens, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. However, if you actually kind of zoom out more and look at the larger societal issues, well, when, when Black Lives Matter had peaceful rallies, people got upset. When Colin Kaepernick took a knee, people got upset. When, um, when people wore shirts, right, Pe people got upset. And so it, it would, it's kind of synonymous to um, a situation where I might say to my wife, hey, I don't really like it when you make me eat salad for dinner. And she goes, oh, okay, and makes me a salad for dinner anyway. And I say, hey, I'm really not, I don't really like salads for dinner. I prefer a steak. I want steak for dinner. And she goes, tough, you're getting a salad. And then I might you know, freak out. She's like, why do I have a salad? And I flip the salad plate over and say, I'm going to grill myself a steak. Well, it's like, well, there was all of these in times where I, you know, tried to have a, a rational conversation. By the way, I, I like salad just fine for dinner, so don't judge me. But, um, but at any rate, there's all these times I tried rationally to have a conversation. And at some point you just get so frustrated and so upset that you don't really have any other option that seems available to you to get people's attention, right? And so that's where, you know, focusing exclusively on crime as opposed to this kind of zoomed out more holistic view of the problems of crime as a social problem in society, uh, criminology benefits us from. Um, criminology also teaches you to critically examine crime statistics and public policy. And um, that is um, another thing, and we're going to give you a perfect example of this in, in a couple slides, where we can critically examine criminal statistics and public policy. Criminal justice also prepares you for a career in law enforcement almost exclusively, while criminology allows you to pursue careers in law enforcement plus other careers. And there's another question here about whether or not criminology would be a good um, career field for social work. And this is where, and, and on the next slide also, I'm, we're going to talk about this. Criminal justice makes you very, very focused and you do a lot of study on law enforcement, whereas criminology allows you to still do the law enforcement stuff, but also zoom out a lot more. One of the big complaints that police uh, departments actually have about criminal justice programs is they're about five to seven years technologically behind what the police academies are teaching students today. And so they say it's great that you're teaching them how to you know, collect fingerprint samples, how all of this stuff works in criminal justice programs, but then when they come to the police academy, they've got all this outdated information because as technology advances, it takes a while for that to trickle into the classroom. Criminology, on the other hand, teaches you to think and critically examine the information and the data in front of you or the evidence in front of you, and therefore you're not necessarily held back by antiquated knowledge, but also it opens up other career paths for you. Now, I'm, I'm not going to just say all of that without any evidence. Obviously, as a criminologist, you know I like evidence, and I assume as people that are interested in criminology, you guys would also like evidence. So Flagler College has actually only had a criminology major, a proper major here on campus for about six years. 
And in that six years of time, we have had students obtain jobs at local, state, and federal law enforcement. And this is not just being a St. Augustine police officer, which there's nothing wrong with, right? There's still a very respectful career, but also in various other aspects of law enforcement that people might not think about, like, like Florida Fish and Wildlife, or Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Highway Patrol, Customs and Border Patrol in the federal system. And so we've had a lot of students very successfully go on and obtain careers in law enforcement. We've also had people join the military and do uh, some more kind of applied uh, military work as military police officers. We've also had people that double major in criminology. As I've said, criminology is a subfield of sociology. And so we have a lot of people that double major in sociology and criminology. And so we've had people go on to be policy analysts or field organizers for various nonprofits to answer the question about social work. We've had a tremendously large amount of people. We actually had a, a, a recent grad just announced um, on Facebook two or three days ago, I believe, that she was just accepted into her doctorate of social work after getting her master's of social work at FSU. And so mental health counseling, be it psychology, um, or um, social work or other types of mental health counseling. We've had a lot of people um, accepted into. Criminology also intersects with the law quite a bit. And so we've had some students that have majored in criminology as well as minored in our law program. And we have an outstanding pre-law program here that really is also one of the things that really makes Flagler unique where they are being taught the law by actual lawyers who practice law in, in St. John's County and they teach it in a way similar to the way law schools teach law. And so if you're interested in going to law school, um, Flagler actually offers this program to you and you take classes as an undergrad and they, they have bar prep classes. And so instead of paying thousands of dollars to a bar prep company, it's part of your, um, your minor here at Flagler. They also teach you what you would learn basically in your first year at law school. And so Flagler, students that go to law school actually have quite a leg up on a lot of other students because of this law minor that we also are, offer. And we've had students accepted at very prestigious law schools like Harvard, Texas, University of Florida. And we are very proud of the fact that in, in only six years of a major, we actually this uh, past year had um, two students accepted into uh, PhD programs in criminology. Um, and so for a young discipline at Flagler, that's actually a quite an accomplishment, but we've also had students, uh, a whole lot of students accepted into master's programs and PhD programs in psychology and sociology as well. And so because criminology is a social science, a lot of what you're doing in criminology is very similar to what you would be doing in sociology and in psychology. And so students might be interested in both disciplines and double major, and there's plenty of room in both of our um, programs if it be between psych and crim or social and crim to do that. And so we'll double major in those and then they maybe decide I want to do mental health counseling in a prison. So they want the crim background, but they also need to go get their master's or PhD in psychology in order to be able to do that mental health counseling. And so the same thing is true with social work. Um, you, uh, you can um, very much get a career in that. Um, I just got another question here. How do we register to minor in pre-law and do we let our counselors know that we're interested when we arrive at the campus in August? So uh, registering for a minor is as easy as, yeah, just letting your, um, your first year advisor know that you're interested in doing that. And then they will get in conversation with you and the registrar in order to add that minor. Um, and it, because depending on how many credits you're coming in with, and I, I, um, I obviously don't know your specific situation, Lauren, but depending on how many credits you come in with also determines if they, they might say wait a semester or two before you declare the minor just because you have to do so many general education classes at the front end that um, it's not really worth it yet. And if you are maybe on the fence or thinking about maybe switching majors or you're not 100% certain what you want to do, they might tell you to wait. However, if you know that you know you're going to law school and there's nothing that's going to get in the way of going to law school, you can still declare that. So it's really kind of up to the conversation between you and your academic advisor, your first year advisor, once you get to campus. So as, um, as promised, um, we're going to look at an example of critical analysis, right? So this is one of the things I said that we do in criminology. Um, and this is probably something that we've all heard, right? You hear people complain about this constantly. Is the world, the world more dangerous place? This is the research question basically, right? Is the world a more dangerous place today than it was in previous generations? We've all heard our parents or grandparents say, back in my day, we used to be able to play outside or we never used to lock our doors growing up or now I've got to lock my car and that's, that's crazy, right? Or society today is just such a dangerous place. I can't imagine what it's like to live in society today. The problem with 
with this, these kind of statements, right, is it's kind of basically just like a kids these days kind of commentary, right? Older generations like to always just kind of talk about how, you know, kids these days have no respect and kids these days are just, you know, doing drugs and, and, and listening to their rock and roll or, or their rap music or fill in the blank, right? Older generations always like to kind of point to these things. From a criminological perspective, though, then, well, is this true? Is it actually more dangerous to live in society today than it was a generation ago? If we look at crime statistics, actually it's not. So I know uh, none of you were born in, in 93 other than um, uh, me and, and Philly that are on the call. But, uh, but from 93 to 2018, which is not, not too terribly long ago, we see actually a pretty clear trend across all crime that crime is actually significantly lower today than it was even 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So the first column there, we got violent crime per 100,000 people has been dropped almost in half. Violent crime per uh, 1,000 people, uh, ages 12 and older, has dropped um, over half. Property crime has, has halved as well as uh, per 100,000 people people as well as per a thousand households. So we see where in this critical analysis, it's actually significantly safer to be a young person today and to live in society today than it was 25 years ago. 25 years ago, there was a lot more crime. Now, some people obviously sit there and say, okay, well, that's all violent crime. That's all property crime. Well, let's just look at what's arguably the worst crime, homicides, right? The US murder from the 1960s to 2014, right? We saw this kind of um, plateauing effect from the 70s to about uh, the 90s, and then we see it drop off to levels that it was in the 1960s. So actually, if you really want to um, you know, have a, a fun uh, conversation with your, your parents and grandparents, it's actually safer today to live than it was when your parents were growing up and your grandparents were were parenting your parents. And so it was actually your parents' generation that seemed to be quite a bit more uh, deviant, if you will, than, than the generation of today. And there's a lot of explanations for that, and criminologists kind of argue over what those explanations are. Some people suggest that the war on crime, as it were, was actually an effective war on crime to reduce the crime rates. Some suggest what happened in the, in the early 90s um, that maybe cause people to stop committing crime was the advent of computers and the internet. So uh, whereas before, you know, idle hands are the devil's uh, workshop, whereas before people used to go outside because they just were bored and had nothing else to do. Now we have YouTube, right? So we can just watch YouTube videos all day long or watch, you know, Netflix and reruns of the office. So instead of being bored or instead of, um, uh, being restless, we have options to kind of fill that time. Right. So that's kind of an example of where a, a criminologist will look at and critically examine some phenomenon that's happening in society and say, well, is it as bad as we actually say it is? Is it effective? Is it not effective? And if it's not effective, what could we do to make it effective? Right. So um, if there are any questions, this is the end of my presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now um, because there's nothing else to look at. Um, and so if you have any questions, please, um, you know, put them in the question box now. I'm happy to accept questions. If you have any questions on admissions um, or uh, uh, procedures as far as applying to Flagler, um, I'm sure Philly wouldn't mind hopping back on and, and answering those questions. So feel free to fire away. I see we have some in the chat here. Maybe let me look here. Um, Could this, okay, so I, I'm sorry, I missed, so I answered the one from Lauren, um, but I, I'm just seeing now, could this also correlate to the decision made in Roe v. Wade? So we actually do um, study uh, Supreme Court cases and the implications of the Supreme Court quite a bit in criminology as well. Um, we, so in the pre-law program, what would happen is you would look at Roe v. Wade and kind of look at the procedural history and the facts of Roe, Roe v. Wade. In criminology, we would look at the underlying assumptions behind um, Roe v. Wade or any Supreme Court case really and say are these assumptions true if they're not true why aren't they true if they are true why are they true so we could look at and, and critically examine um, all sorts of, of court cases and and one thing that's like you know we talk about legal fictions in a lot of our classes where 
a law is passed that assumes something to be true, but what if that thing isn't true, right? So um, in the example of Roe v. Wade, right, the Roe v. Wade, um, if, in case anyone is unaware, is uh, the court case that established the affirmative right to um, an abortion for um, pregnant women. In the early 90s, a, a uh, or, I'm sorry, in the early 2000s, an executive order was passed after a horrific homicide where a pregnant woman was murdered, and during the course of her being murdered and she was thrown into a lake, her body expelled her, um, her unborn child. The problem is, at no point in any jurisdiction was that actually viewed as a life, and so the husband who ended up killing his wife and um, potentially unborn child, depending on what you define as a life, was only charged with one count of murder because he couldn't be charged with a second count because it was an unborn child. So the president at the time assigned the Unborn Victims of Violence Act into law, and that made um, unborn children who are killed, you could charge the offender with murder. That's in stark contrast to the, uh, the basic idea and fundamental right of I mean, abortion. So how do you uh, rationalize and justify those kinds of um, decisions? And so to answer the question about do we talk about decisions like Roe v. Wade absolutely all the time, especially when we talk about those theories of law and law creation. So we have another question here. Can I major in one department and have a minor in another? Absolutely. So criminology is in the Department of Behavioral Sciences and law is in the Humanities Department. So if you minored in law, you would inherently have a minor in another department. Um, also, we have some students that major in, in criminology and business. We have some that like, um, we had one student who was a communication student that wants to be a basically kind of a crime beat writer. And so she thought that it would be valuable to get her degree in journalism as well as criminology so she could better report on, on crimes that happen in, um, in society. So it's very easy to do that. And we actually highly encourage uh, people to pick up double majors or minors in and out of our department. Um, another question is criminology go into the psychological, uh, excuse me, psychological aspects of why the criminal do what they do, or is it more just the study of the crime itself? No, it's very much um, the study of why people do what they do. In the psychological aspects of it, we do talk about psychological theories, but we also couch them in the larger discipline of all theories. So there's biological theories of why people commit crime, there's psychological theories, there's sociological theories, there's economic theories. And so we go into detail in all of those different types of theories. Um, psychology is um, obviously pretty heavily focused on in quite a few theories. And so we will talk about those, but um, we don't have necessarily whole classes dedicated just to um, psychological theories of crime. Um, so we have another question here. Um, would majoring in criminology be helpful with a career in the FBI? It could be. Um, and it could not be. So it really, if you think about the FBI, one of the things I always ask people that are interested in becoming FBI agents, because a lot of people seem to be quite interested in that, is why is it that you want to be an FBI agent? And it seems as though a lot of people want to be FBI agents because they really think it's cool to say I'm in the FBI. Because when you start asking them, well, what kind of crimes do you want to investigate? They're like, I want to catch murderers and rapists. And I think that that is awesome. The FBI doesn't investigate those, though. Local law enforcement and state law enforcement do that. The FBI only investigates federal crimes. And so unless you were a serial killer committing crimes in multiple states, even certain serial killers within the state, the FBI has to be asked and invited down to help investigate. And so if you think about the types of, of crimes the FBI investigates, they do investigate terrorism, but they typically also investigate business and computer crimes. And so, or, or corporate and computer crimes. So you would need to have advanced knowledge of how computers work and also how accounting and business practices work to better your odds of getting accepted into the FBI. Because in order to investigate something like Enron or Bertie Madoff, um, you need to understand the basics of accounting and of, of business. And so it would really, it could be helpful, but in conjunction with something else on its own as a standalone major, in just criminology, it's not as helpful as other things uh, probably could be. So do you feel criminology is a really important major for the next generation and to be able to change the world for the better? I think that education is really important for the next generation and changing the world for the better. And so I think that, I, I don't want to say 
that criminology is in and of itself the only way to do that. I think that having uh, being exposed to a diversity of opinions and a diversity of viewpoints and a diversity of people is the best way to do that, regardless of what you're studying. And so, and that's one of the advantages of a, a liberal arts school like Flagler um, is that we force you through your general education classes to take classes and things that you might not necessarily be all that interested in. But then when you take the classes, find out, wow, this is super fascinating. Our sociology major here is actually a, a beautiful example of that. Very few students come to college majoring in sociology because a lot of them just, a lot of students in general aren't exposed to sociology in, in high school. So you don't, I mean, we all know what English is. We all know what math is. We all know what history is um, from our high school training. We don't really know what sociology is. But then once they're exposed to sociology as a, as a major and criminology as a subfield of that, they suddenly just become fascinated with this idea of society. And we see our freshman numbers for sociology are not super high, but by sophomore year, they jump up. And that's because once our, our sociology program kind of exposes you to what sociology is, people just fall in love with it and find it super fascinating. And so that it, it's, a, it's a good question, um, but I don't think criminology has a monopoly on making the world a better place. I think just educating yourself and exposing yourself to a lot of different uh, viewpoints and ideas has a better chance of making the world a better place than just a major in criminology. Uh, so in my first four years at Flagler, I can major in criminology and minor in pre-law and then graduate and go to law school. Yes. Now there's other, there's other variables in that, right? You need to keep your GPA up if you want to go to law school um, because your uh, kind of the way that law schools work is the LSAT, which is the uh, basically the law SAT um, is um, used and the higher you get on that, kind of like with college, the higher you get on the SAT, the better your chances are of getting accepted into school, as well as keeping your GPA high, just like in high school, the higher your GPA, the better your chances are. So majoring in criminology with a minor in law, and then taking the LSAT and making sure you keep your GPA up while you're here will, will be a great recipe for success and acceptance into law school, certainly. Um, all right, here we go. Does the FBI work in human trafficking cases? They do, um, as do local um, law enforcement. So it really kind of depends on what you mean, I suppose, by human trafficking. And so they do, they will help um, in those kind of criminal enterprises, but that's also more kind of the organized crime element of, of the FBI. Whereas um, we have like the St. John's County uh, Sheriff's Office has a, a special victims unit that deals almost exclusively in sex trafficking in some capacity. And so if you want to do more kind of focused sex trafficking work, working in a special victims unit at a sheriff's department or state law enforcement agency would still probably be a, a better, more consistent route than working the FBI where that's kind of grouped in with all organized crime, which could include, you know, the mob or drug trafficking or any sort of other trafficking interstate. Um, what is the difference between what the CIA investigates and what the FBI does? So this is actually, that's a great question. And this is something that, because whenever we talk about federal law enforcement agencies in general, people always say FBI, CIA. The reality is the CIA is not a law enforcement agency. The CIA is an international spy agency, right? So the CIA's main job is collecting intelligence outside of America. The FBI, the, if, I mean, really, if we're going to boil down what the FBI is, so we have sheriffs, right? The sheriff's department, local police, they investigate stuff in the city, right? They, they enforce city laws, right? So like in St. Augustine, if we're not allowed out after, or like bars, bars have to close in St. Augustine at 2 a.m. If the sheriff's department drives by and see a bar is open at 3, they may go and shut the bar down. But they're really just focused on the city. State law enforcement, like Florida Department of Law Enforcement, is focused on the state and state laws. Federal, the FBI is basically just detectives for federal laws. And so, and again, federal laws are typically business laws, securities laws, like the stock market, uh, organized crime, terrorism, computer crime. And so um, the FBI are basically just federal detectives, whereas the CIA investigates, gathers intelligence, and basically, for lack of better verbiage, spies on people outside of America and, and focus their attention on um, terrorist organizations that are in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever, uh, wherever they may be. So, so their focus is exclusively outside of America. The FBI's focus is exclusively internal in America. Um, 
What degree do I need to be a criminal profiler? So that is also an excellent question and it depends, um, it depends what you mean by criminal profiler. So a lot of people are influenced by the TV show Criminal Minds and it is a fascinating TV show. It's a very entertaining TV show, but it is in no way meant to be a documentary on what criminal profiling is. And so, and in fact, the science of criminal profiling is, is better described as an art of criminal profiling because there is no real scientific, um, strong scientific basis for it. And with, if you had 10 profilers, they'd probably give you 10 different profiles given the same evidence. And so there's a lot of research that actually needs to be done into profiling, which is uh, one of the things that's nice about criminology is because we do research, we're helping kind of to drive that field forward a little bit more. But, um, Degrees in criminal profiling, typically, to be a criminal profiler, especially for the FBI, you typically have to become an FBI agent and then be viewed as a very good positive FBI agent, and they do kind of field training with you to be a criminal profiler. They're not necessarily super impressed with you having a PhD or, or advanced degrees in any sort of discipline. They're more impressed with the work you do as an agent once you become an FBI agent. Kind of like being a detective. You can't just apply for a job right out of college to be a detective. You have to go become a police officer, be a really good police officer for a year or two or three, and then you get promoted to be a detective. The same thing is basically true for profiling, especially in the FBI. And so obviously criminology, psychology, sociology, all those things would help you be a better police officer or a better FBI agent, but they're not necessarily, there's no like degree where it's like, if you get a PhD in psychology, they will say, please come be a profiler. You're good to go. That's not really how, how profiling works. What kind of careers are a good fit for people who are interested in the field of criminology uh, due to studying the minds and motives of criminals? So there's all sorts of careers as, as um, referenced in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, you could go into law enforcement. Um, if law enforcement is not your thing, you could do mental health counseling, you could be a policy analyst. You could have non-sworn positions that work in police departments. So certain police departments might have um, people on, um, on staff that are not sworn officers with a gun and a badge that will help uh, deal with training um, and, and kind of administrative um, issues. Um, those are obviously more at larger police departments and sheriff's departments than maybe like a local city police department. Um, you could do policy analysis, you could do research. Um, there are some students that have referenced that are getting their PhDs because they want to do research and teach. So there's all sorts of uh, careers that you could um, be open to with a degree in uh, criminology. Uh, what prereqs do we need to get a degree in criminology? You need to graduate high school and get accepted to college, and then you can get your degree in criminology. We don't require you to take any classes beforehand. We're not looking for anything on your high school transcripts to, to um, differentiate you. Um, if Flagler accepts you, then declare your major as criminology, and you have met the prereqs. Um, moving into career and forensics. Sorry, this is an excellent question. Also, what major minor would be most beneficial? So, Typically, forensics um, and people like CSI-esque um, uh, people uh, as seen on TV are, again, trained in, by the police departments or their, their jobs. Now, what is beneficial for you is, and, and this is actually a, a, an excellent question because uh, it allows me to kind of brag about Flagler a little more. We have a public administration program. And the uh, professors of public administration, one is the retired undersheriff for St. John's County, and one is a former SWAT commander up for Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And they'll, they'll teach some of the classes in criminology as well as uh, run public administration. But they've given the advice to students before that they said major in criminology as an undergrad, get a master's degree in forensic science, and then go, um, get, go into the field. Because what will make you a better forensic scientist is if you're more well-rounded as a forensic scientist. If you studied forensic science as an undergrad and then forensic science in your graduate school, and then you went and started working, you'd have a lot of knowledge on just this one topic. Whereas if you diversify your education a little bit, you'll be able to look at kind of the criminal um, element of it from a more sociological, psychological perspective, as well as the scientific evidence that's present in any sort of investigative um, task and be able to kind of merge the two fields of knowledge together. And so their best advice was major in criminology as an undergrad, get a master's degree in forensics, and then um, enter the field that way. 
Do we have any other questions? Yes, we do. Um, does forensic psychology and criminology relate? Um, yes, so it, again, and I, I hate to, to beat this drum, but it depends what you mean by forensic psychology. So if by, so forensic psychology is a really broad definition. There are some people that view that as basically mental health counseling in a, in a prison or forensic setting, competency hearings to stand trial, um, uh, even competency hearings to be punished, right? Do we, do we can, if you can't stand trial, do we send you to a, a, a mental health facility instead of a jail or a prison or what do we do with you? Some people view that as any sort of intersection of psychology with the legal system. So for example, my area of expertise is in jury decision-making and witnesses. I go to a lot of legal psychology or forensic psychology conferences to present my research because it's the intersection of psychology and the law in some capacity. So that's potentially a, a field uh, or a, a, uh, an element of forensic psychology. In, in, in both of those regards, they do relate to each other. It just depends what you wanna do with a degree in forensic psychology. If you wanna be a mental health counselor, then criminology could be helpful, but what's gonna be more helpful is probably a degree in psychology. If you're interested in studying juries or witness behavior or, or false confessions, criminology could be um, a, a better fit as well as legal psych or, or um, human factors, um, psychology in that capacity. So it really just kind of depends what you mean by forensic psychology when you say that. But there, especially at the undergraduate level, there is a decent amount of overlap to where double majoring in both psychology and criminology would probably kind of scratch that itch for the forensic psychology. But I know Dr. Litzinger teaches um, uh, a legal psych class. She also teaches human factors. Dr. Bates in psychology um, teaches on learning and memory. And one of the big memory issues is eyewitness misidentifications is because there are memory errors. And so there's some of that in, in our psychology program as well. I haven't heard a whole lot about sociology. What would you describe it as? So sociology is basically like psychology is the study of the human psyche. Sociology is the study of society. So whereas psychology might look at an individual who's a criminal, right? And say, and this is in a uh, watered down example, but it, look at a criminal and say, well, let's see what is wrong with this person as an individual. Do they have a, a personality disorder? Do they have some sort of um, psychosis that's causing this criminality to happen? Sociology zooms out more and says, what is happening in the broader society to allow crime to happen? Why is it that crime seems to be disproportionately committed by people that are of the lower socioeconomic status? That's uh, a kind of, you know, a, a known reality about crime. Why is that the case? And so instead of saying what's wrong with the individual, a sociologist say what's wrong with society as a whole. One of the things that I think is very, very beneficial to anyone who's even remotely interested in going into any sort of mental health counseling or law enforcement is to understand psychology and sociology. Right now, especially with the, the protests and riots that are going on right now in, in our society, having more sociologists to talk about what the problems are, why are we having these racial, um, racial tensions would be very beneficial to talk about some of the uh, larger societal issues that are present. Because we can look at individuals and say, well, that individual has this problem and that individual has that problem, but that still doesn't address the larger kind of systemic problems that are present in society. And so you would be a better mental health counselor, right? I, I could give you the best therapy in the world to get you to not use drugs, but if I move you back into a house where everyone else is doing drugs, you're probably gonna do drugs again, right? Because you're surrounded by it. And so, the best psychology in the world wouldn't fix it. And in the reverse, the best sociology in the world can't fix necessarily an individual psychosis, but it's an intersection and a merging of the two to get a more holistic view. And so that's kind of the advantage of sociology is to look at the societal structures and societal issues that are present in any sort of situation to try and help solve the problem. Um, can I talk a little bit about internships one could do through the program? Absolutely. So I'm actually the internship coordinator for criminology also. And so we have interns placed all over the place. We, um, we are proud of the fact that we have a very good relationship with the St. Augustine um, Beach Police Department, the St. Augustine Police Department, and the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. We have interns at all of those locations often. We have, um, it's a very uh, difficult internship to get, but we have some interns at the FBI. Um, we have a lot of people do internships at the Juvenile Justice Center, which is right across the street from campus. And in fact, several people have actually figured out that 
what they wanted to do with their careers was they realized law enforcement was not for them, but juvenile justice or juvenile probation was very much what they were into. Getting in there, working with kids that are, are committing deviant acts and trying to help, um, help them through that during a kind of uh, formative time in their life. And so we've placed people at juvenile probation, a couple people at adult probation. We have some people at the jails in town. And so we have internships everywhere. Some people even will choose to, that might not live locally in Florida, uh, decide to do an internship up at their home police department up in Boston or Connecticut or Delaware. And so we, we have uh, placed interns in a lot of places. And what is, I think, invaluable about an internship is a lot of people think they want to do something until they do it. And so I've had students that have said, I really want to be a police officer, I really want to be a police officer. And then they go uh, do a, an internship at a police department and say, oh, that is not for me. I like having my nails painted and I can crack a nail or something, right? Or like for me, I'm little, I'm only five, five foot eight. So everyone's bigger than I am. I don't want to get smacked. And so um, they decide that they are going to do something else with their uh, careers. And that's much better to figure out early on from doing an internship, as opposed to joining the police force and then realizing, boy, I went through all that training. And now that I'm doing this work, I do not like it. I want to make a career change. And so we do have internships and I highly recommend people to do them. We have our, our law program offers legal internships for those that are interested in law school. So you can see the work of a lawyer. And to be honest with you, a lot of people after doing legal internships realize you're not really in a courtroom all that often. And you spend a lot of time sitting behind your desk doing paperwork and researching. And if that's not something that you're, you like, then maybe there's a different uh, career path for you. So we do have internships. We have a pretty robust internship program and we place people at a, a real diversity of different types of um, internships all across the county in a lot of different fields. So that was an excellent question. I, I appreciate you letting me bring that up. Do we have other questions at all? Is there anything I haven't answered adequately or you want, uh, does anyone have any follow-ups on anything that I've, I've said? Nope. <laughs> does anyone have any questions for, for Philly about um, admissions requirements or, or uh, the process of applying uh, to Flagler? I guess not. <laughs> well, um, I do want to just say in closing, thank you all so much for, uh, for chiming in here and letting me talk to you for the last hour. And I really appreciate your questions. And I certainly hope that I see you all here in, uh, at Flagler either this fall or next fall. Thank you very much, Josh. Um, I just wanted to hop on and say thank you for um, giving this great lecture. It was very informative. I do see um, one question about applications that I wanted to go ahead and um, answer. So if you are looking to apply for fall 2020, our application is still open. So you can do that on the website. Um, you will need to use um, our Flagler application. Um, at this point, you can't use Common App because um, the deadline has passed for that. But if you are referring to fall 2021 or beyond, um, the applications open August of the year before you're entering school. So this August, August 2020, is when we will um, open up applications for fall 2021 and subsequent years follow the same pattern. So that's how applications work at Flagler. Um, I do see another question about will campus be open this fall. Um, at this point, we are still monitoring the situation. Um, campus did send out an email um, saying that if we are able to be open, we will be open and we will have um, classes on campus. They are still looking at some hybrid different um, methods of instruction possibilities and everything else. But at this point, we are still a little too far out to make real definitive answers, um, but we are in the process of moving towards that goal. Um, there are a lot of committees formed in making sure we bring um, our students back to campus um, safely, and we will keep everyone posted. So if that question is coming from somebody that is actually entering this fall, 
just keep an eye on your email. Um, you will be notified as much as possible um, for all of that. But um, lastly, I just want to, again, thank you, um, Josh, for being here and doing this presentation. And if you have any questions after today um, for, about anything, you can email admissions at flagler.edu and we'll make sure um, it either is answered by us or by whoever is the appropriate person to answer as well. So um, thank you. Yes. Yeah, there, there was just one more question asked about yes. summer programs. And so I, I'm assuming by summer programs, the student means summer classes and we do offer courses over the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're, you're more than welcome to be a year round student if you so desire. Um, if you mean summer programs like, like camps or in-depth studies for high school students, I will kick that to Philly because I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, so um, I would say during a normal summer, there is typically some opportunities as far as camps and things go. Um, this summer, nothing is happening. Um, but but um, there are usually some types of opportunities. A lot of our camps do center around um, sports and different things like that. But every now and then there's like a humanities camp, um, some arts camps, film camps, stuff like that. Um, so it just kind of depends summer to summer. All right. I think that is all of it. So like I said, any questions after today, email admissions at flagler.edu. And thank you everyone for being here. Have a great one. Thanks, Billy. <laughs>